Um, the little girl had that meltdown a while ago. I think Josh handled it so well. That's yeah. Pastor's heart right yeah. there. Yes. We were in, um, Don and I, when we first got married, we were in a church over in Camel County one Sunday evening, and it was full. And this little boy, about, I don't know, maybe five or six years old, was sitting down front with his dad, and man, was he showing himself royal. And his dad tried everything to get him calm. He wouldn't do it. So finally, Daddy throwed him over his shoulder and toward the bathroom they headed. And about halfway up the aisle, that kid had sense enough to look over and holler, y'all pray for me. <laughs> that dis oh, that had everybody about in the floor. Uh, Donna and I, our first ministry that we had together was children's church pastors. Well, we uh, were in attendance at this one uh, in Rustburg that had 110 children in it one Sunday morning. And that is why I look like this now. <laughs> I was mistaken uh, at a hotel in Williamsburg one night for Jeff Bridges. The clerk, I had a Hawaiian looking shirt on, my hair was a lot longer and the the clerk actually thought I was Jeff Bridges, and had I kept my mouth shut, I'd have got a deluxe room for nothing. <laughs> but uh, I couldn't do that to him. And, but, and I thought that was pretty cool for a while till I saw that he's got a new show on called Old Man. <laughs> so I no longer identify with Jeff Bridges, okay? I just want y'all to understand that. We broke when I saw that. I want to talk to you for a few minutes. I had no idea what I was going to do when I got in here this morning, but uh, the Lord scares me to death about five minutes before I get up here, and, he, and so I'm going to try what he told me to do. But we're going to look at Romans chapter 10 this morning, where Paul writes with his desire for his nation to be saved and he talks about being saved. And you know, a lot of people have been in church all their life and they really do not quite understand what it means to be saved. Many people believe because they attend church, they are saved. Many people believe because they have served in church, they are saved or that they do good things that they are saved. But those are the things you do because you are saved, not, not to be saved. And a, a wonderful example of that was one night at that same church that had the 110 children, the pastor had to be out of town. And so the pastor's brother, who was an evangelist, was preaching. And he preached a very simple salvation message. Uh, and, and at the end of the service, this lady, uh, and I'll only give her first name was Betty, she gets up from the back and she starts down the aisle. Well, nobody thought anything odd of that because she, her husband was the chairman of the board of deacons. Well, you know, we all know deacons aren't really saved, but you know, anyway, I'm, I'm just playing, okay. Mark Lowry got away with doing that. And they thought maybe she was coming to pray with somebody or whatever. And she comes walking up front and tells the preacher, she said, I've never been saved in my life. I've never been saved. Yeah. And she had been in that church for nearly 30 years, had been the head of every committee, was the sweetest woman you'd ever meet, served in every capacity. But she was never really saved. And everybody was like, oh, you know, but you know what? Thank God she was bold enough to admit that. Rather than spend an eternity in hell over her pride, she goes up there and says, I've never been saved. And it, it was a really encouraging night for a lot of other people in the church that had thought the same thing about themselves. And so sometimes, even though we're in a Bible-believing church and a Bible-preaching church, sometimes we need to go over the basics again. And so Paul writes in Romans chapter 10, he said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. And Israel 
which had the oracles of God, which were given all of the prophets of God, the scriptures and all of that, most of Israel was never saved because they never believed that Jesus was the Messiah. And he said, for I, I, I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. In other words, they're all excited about the things of God, but they don't know anything about God. They have a zeal. Uh, um, I, I know a lot of people, man, they've been in church. They've had the church experience, and they love going to church, but they've never accepted the God of the church. They've never accepted the Messiah, the bridegroom of the church. And he said, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness, go about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And what he's saying right there was in their minds, they had it made up of what they had to do to get to heaven. And you can walk on the, up on the street to anybody. You can even do it in the church. You might could do it in here. And go, what do I need to do to get to heaven? And they'll tell you, well, you've got to go to church regularly. You've got to join the church. You've got to serve. You've got to do this. You've got to do good. You've got to behave yourself. Well, all of those things are good, and, and please, by all means, behave yourself, okay? Y'all have no idea the headache that gives me when you don't do that. <laughs> but that's not what gets you into heaven. Don't ever tell somebody, particularly as a parent, don't say, if you're a good little boy, you'll get to heaven, and if you're a bad little boy, you get to hell. There's a lot of good little boys or grown good little boys in hell right now thought they were doing the right thing. That's not what gets you into heaven, by no means. It's a good thing to be one, but that's not what gets you saved. For he says, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to every one that believes. There were about 611 Levitical laws that the Jews had to obey, they believed, to be in good standing with God. And we, a lot of times, we'll wear a prayer shawl for special occasions here, and some of the original ones have 611 little things on the bottom of it, fringes, to represent those laws. But Paul explained that those laws were not written to get you into heaven, but those laws were to explain to you how lost you really are. Mm -hmm. Because nobody can obey those 611 laws. No matter what form of righteousness you create for yourself, it's not going to happen. And I, I would dare say that everybody in here broke three or four of them at least this morning. And unbeknownst to you, I, most of us haven't even read all 611 of them. They're very tedious. And they were written them, uh, deliberately to be tedious. God said that the law was our schoolmaster to take us to Christ. Schoolmaster, in the form that Paul was explaining, was not the head of a school or a principal. It was a servant that the Jewish families would hire when the children were small to make them go to school. You know, kicking and screaming. That's what they did. Because kids back then didn't want to go either. A lot of them had to go sit in the synagogue or the temple and listen to the teachers talk. And they didn't want to go, but that was important. And so the schoolmaster took it. So in other words, the law, the 611 Levitical laws drug us to Jesus. Because when we read those things, we find out how pathetic we really are. We really are. We are pathetic, dirty, rotten. Do I need to continue? Sinners according to that law. And you'll say, well, Dave, I only done broke one or two of them. Well, the Bible said if you broke one, you're guilty of all of them. So it doesn't make any difference. We're all in the same boat this morning. And, and those laws drug us to the feet of Christ. So Christ is the end of the law. When you get to the end of it, there he is waiting on you. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. So if you think that you can 
get into heaven by obeying the law, you got to do them all. You've got to obey every single one of them. Don't take that challenge because you will go to hell tired. Can't do it. But the righteousness which is of faith, there we go, speaketh on this wise, say not in your heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from heaven or from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead. And then he asks this question, and then he's going to explain to us what it takes to genuinely be saved. I pray that everybody listens with an open heart this morning and searches themselves because you may have overlooked this and there's no shame in that if you have. What would be a shame would be to walk out of here not having dealt with this. And he said, for what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. And here's what you need to know if you want to get into heaven. Here's what you need to know if you want to walk out of here knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are saved. That if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Bible said that everybody will do it one day or another. And many of them unfortunately will have to do it before the great white throne of judgment only to be thrown into the lake of fire because they had their chance and they refused. But everybody, it said that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We'll all do it one day. And so it's better to do it on this side of life than on the other side. Confess him now. That if you will confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You've got to believe that Jesus, the gospel, that first of all, that Jesus was born of a virgin. He had no earthly father. His father was the Holy Ghost. And that he walked this earth and lived a sinless, perfect life. None of us can brag on that. He is the only one that walked this earth that never sinned. He was God the Son in human flesh. He went to the cross at Calvary and died for what we did, not what he did, what we did. He was the Lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice that was the only thing that could take away our sins. He was buried. And three days later, he walked out of that tomb victorious and he said because I live you shall live also and the Bible said do you believe that well like that song says here's hoping to heaven that you do if you believe that God raised his son from the dead and you confess that Jesus is Lord you shall be saved and it's not done with the head it's done with the heart uh, Donna and I are only going to share this for just a second. I'm going to elaborate on it later. But Donna and I had an opportunity <coughs> Friday evening to meet one of the top mathematicians in the world. And he was a scientist also. The conversation, I felt, and I got a doctorate degree of my own, but I felt like a total hillbilly talking to him. I couldn't hardly understand nothing he said because I'm not very good with math. I'm not. One of my kids came home from school one day and I said, what have you been learning? They said, algebra. And I said, oh, really? Well, say something in algebra. <laughs> and they said, pi r square. And I said, do you know that's the most ignorant thing I ever heard of in my life? Pi r round, cornbread r square. That didn't work too well when I said that. So I kind of felt like a hillbilly when I was talking to this guy, me and Donna. We were in awe of this man. And he loved the Lord with all his heart. Well, when he switched from math and science and economics and started talking what I know how to talk about and Donna knows how to talk about, all of a sudden his face changed and he sounded like a child when he talked about Jesus. Because the Bible said that's how you get saved. You've got to accept him like a little child. 
you can't accept him with this head right here. It's got to be done with the heart. That's how it's done. That if you shall confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, not just this head, because a lot of people miss heaven by the inches between the head and the heart. You got to believe in the heart that God raised from the dead, you shall be saved with. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, whoever believes in him shall not be ashamed. And that's the way this man was. He didn't know us from Adam when we met him. But he set us up in a conversation to where he could witness to us. And then when he found out we knew the Lord, we stood and talked for an hour and a half to, to him. There were people walking by us that saw us when we started talking and an hour and a half, they came back and said, you guys are really into some deep conversation or something to be here that long. And he said, that's because we are family. Amen. Never seen this man before in my life. I'm hoping to bring him here one day and let y'all meet this man. But that's the way that works. If you believe in him, you will not be ashamed of him. Why in the world? Would anybody be ashamed of Jesus after what he did for us? Amen. Oh, my goodness. If you're ashamed of him, something powerfully wrong with you. For this, nobody, whoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. For there, And listen to this. I like this. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. That literally means the Jew and the what? The Gentile. Anybody who wasn't a Jew was called a Greek, even if you're Irish. Okay? There's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord, overall, is rich unto all that call upon him. You don't have to have money. You don't have to have a pedigree. You don't have to have where your family all knew the Lord. It don't make no difference what you have done, where you did it at, and who you did it with. It don't make no difference your past whatsoever. Everybody has a chance to be saved. I love it where they say that the ground at the foot of the cross is level. Where all of us can come to Jesus. Whosoever wills, what the Bible says, whosoever will. That's you, that's me, it doesn't make any difference. He, he, he will accept anybody that comes to him. So don't sit there thinking today that you are unworthy. Even though you are. Even though we are. Everybody in here is unworthy. And if anybody thinks that you are worthy to be saved, next Sunday, we're going to put a video screen up here, and we're going to run a projector of all of your thoughts for the last week. <laughs> if I could do that, there wouldn't be a soul that would show up in here on Sunday morning, me included. <laughs> But it don't make no difference. Whatever has gone on in your life, you all have the opportunity. All right. Then he said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's why a child can be saved. That's why this incredible professor that we met could be saved. Oh, I promise I won't go and say nothing but I, about much, but I got to tell this. Never met a more, I've never met a more educated man in my life. I, I, he, he had a pedigree that looked like a CVS receipt. Yeah. <laughs> Some of y'all got rap sheets that long. Oh. <laughs> but what this man told us, you know, he had all these formulas and scientific terms. But then when he started talking about Jesus, his, chase, his face changed like a child. And he said, let me tell you how I got saved. He said, I went back to my, the house that I was raised in, my uncle lived there. And I went to my old room and I found a children's Bible that was given when I was a kid and I never looked at it. And it was there. And he said, I sat down and I read that children's Bible and I got saved. A children's Bible. That 
That's how simple the gospel is, people. Please don't let the devil or let a preacher or let a denomination or anybody else make it more difficult than what it is. It is very, very simple. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can't get any simpler than that. How then shall they call on him, how shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? That is why God calls the most unlikely people in the world to go and tell this story of Jesus. There are many of you, again, feeling unworthy and with no, you don't think you've got the ability and all well, good. Good. If you think you, that God can use you, unless you think you can do something, you, that you've got something to offer God. And he will call people to go and give the gospel in, in the most unorthodox and strangest and unworthy people in the world to do it. It's, it's just really funny to watch how God transforms people and calls them, and you can sit back and watch what they do when they have listened to the Lord. And it says here, how shall they preach except they be sent? And as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. And then he makes the statement again as he is concerned for his own nation. He said, but they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah said, Lord who hath believed our report. And so here's how it works. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It is, there's no other way to be saved outside of believing what this Bible right here says, the word of God. That's how it comes. When you hear the preaching of the word of God, the reading of the word of God, that gives you the gospel. But I say, have they not heard? Yea, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. Right now the nation of Israel is living in peril, in great danger over there. They are surrounded by their enemies. They're bombarded all day long. The news will never tell you at all of the missiles coming over the border all day long from the enemy. They only will tell you something that maybe one of the Israelis did. But that's what the deal is. They are in great danger. They're in great peril all the time. And they have not listened to the gospel. But the Bible said, I will provoke you to jealousy by people that are no people. And one of these days, according to Paul's prayer in Romans 11, they will look and they will see what God has done for the church. And when the church disappears off of this earth, they're going to go, you know what, that could have been us. That could have been us. And the Bible said they will eventually turn to Jesus. And they will accept him as the Messiah. But all of the things they will have to go through before they do, and they never really had to do any of that if they had just called upon the name of the Lord. Isaiah is very bold and said, I was found to them that sought me not. That's us. That's us. And I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. They weren't looking for me. And I made myself plain to them. That's us. But to Israel, he says, all day long have I stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Friends, this morning, I'm going to close with this. God is stretching out his hands to each and every one of y'all in here. Even though you may not be believing him, even though you might be disobedient, God is still stretching his hands out to you. You know, we'll look at somebody that does something bad or something awful, and, you know, we try to sick God on them like a dog. But, you know, what if God come after us for what we did? What if, he, what if he gave us what we really deserved? We would be in the same boat as that person that did something awful because we've done something awful in our life too. 
And so this morning I will say this. If you haven't called on the name of the Lord this morning, please do that. Please do that. If you've got friends and family that haven't done that, read Romans chapter 10 to them. Sit down and say, can I talk to you for a moment and show them Romans chapter 10? Folks, let's stand. We're going we're gonna to have a song of invitation and give you an opportunity. Now, listen to this now. You, you may be looking around and go, man, look at all these people in here. I'm not going to go down there. That's embarrassing. Oh, no, 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 no. It'll be more embarrassing if you stand in the judgment one day and Jesus said, I never knew you. You come on down here because we are here because we love y'all. We love one another. We want to see people come to Jesus. You don't need to be ashamed or embarrassed about a blessed thing. All you need to do is come down here and let one of these prayer warriors take you by the hand and pray with you or whatever. And, and, and even if you know the Lord, if you're saved and all of that, but there are things on your heart that you need prayer for, hey, God is still able. Amen. He's still able. And so as Candy sings, if you have something between you and the Lord this morning, come on down here and let's do business with Him. what you see there's so much you don't know about me like all these regrets that I can't forget the failure I can't help but be meanwhile I still do my best knowing that I'll pass the test that proves I am weak that I'm just a freak that I sure can make a mess but he cares about me and he hasn't gone anywhere in loss or in gain he still stays the same his love for me just ain't fair cause he cares about me may not like who you are you know the darkness that lives in your heart but he sees it too and he still loves you even you can sing this next part he cares about me and he hasn't gone anywhere loss or in gain he still stays the same his love for me just ain't fair yeah he cares about me it may not always seem true but no matter what I do he cares about me and he hasn't gone anywhere in loss or in gain he still stays the same his love for me just ain't fair yeah he cares about me and he loss or in gain he still stays the same his love for me just ain't fair yeah he cares about me